How's it going everybody? Look at this weather we've been having. Just wet, cold, foggy, but not normal winter cold here. It's been above freezing. Um, you guys can see, like, there's almost no snow here up north, which is weird. My truck is disgustingly filthy, which I don't like. I try and keep this thing really clean, but uh, it is what it is. Today's video, I bought this load trail trailer. Uh, this is the exact trailer I was looking for. Um, I like this brand. They get good reviews. This is a 10K 20-foot equipment trailer. This is exactly the trailer I wanted. And uh, purchased this locally. And pulling it home, a couple of things I noticed. Number one, this hub got hot. And the one on the other side on the back. So I want to go over that today. And the other thing is, I'm not sure that the brakes are working on this, so I'm going to pull this thing apart and get started on it. Let's have a look, see. So if you've never dealt with trailer brakes or trailer bearings, this is definitely the video for you. Anyhow, we're going to get this thing jacked up. Stay tuned. Okay, first things first, and again, it is gross out, but uh, i got to work on this thing outside because this doesn't fit in my shop. It's too wide for my door, so... A couple pieces of OSB, just this footing. I'm going to try and see if I can get this thing jacked up. I might have to get some more blocks. Um, I got the tires chalked on my truck. This thing is still hooked up to my truck. Uh, parking brakes on and it's in gear. Um, it's very icy today, so I'm just going to be really careful. I don't want this thing to slide. It is only a trailer, but this trailer still weighs like 3,500 pounds, so I don't know if I'm going to get enough lift out of this. Let's see if the tires are even off the ground. And it doesn't look like they are, so, hmm. <clears throat> now I have to decide, should I put this on the, on my jack stands? Okay, so that's as high as this thing goes. Okay, let's try something else. <laughs> Again, I've never jacked this thing up, so my uh, my floor jack for my shop died the other day, so I gotta use this thing. That's like a 20, 20 ton jack. Give me a second here. Okay, well, I put this concrete foot, footing underneath, but still not getting enough lift, so that means I'm gonna have to detach this from my truck and use the front jack. Um, I am going to put this thing on jack stands and carefully lift it up, make sure it's not going to roll anywhere. Okay, you guys can see it's on the jack stands, but it's still, these tires are still touching the ground, so I'll, uh, I'll have to jack this thing up. Okay. Drop leg. I had to replace this pin too, this is the wrong pin for there. Okay. And do this. Nice thing is there's no ice under this leg, so it shouldn't move. Put this pin back in there. Okay. Jack this thing back up. Let's see if we can get this thing to lift. This is a uh, 14,000 pound jack, so it'll lift this thing pretty quickly. Whether I can get enough lift to get the tires off the ground is another question, though. Pretty sure I'm lifting the back of my truck off the ground. Anyways, you guys get the idea. Okay, I got the drop leg down, and that's all we're looking for. And Again, make sure this thing's not going to fall off. It seems to be okay. Just worried about safety. I don't want this thing dropping on me. Okay, well, first things first. This thing's plugged into the truck right here. I want to see if my brakes are working or what they're doing. So, first thing I'm going to do is spike my brakes. I have the gain turned up all the way. I'm going to spike my brakes in the truck and see what it's doing. And here's my brake controller. I don't know if you guys can see right there. So, the green light's on. 
Okay, that's how you spike the brakes. I'm just gonna put a piece of tin tape to hold that on. Okay, all I've done is taped my brake controller so it's on. The green light's on, it says it's working. Um, this is a Takancha, I believe this is an inertia system. A little bit different, but it, 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 it works. I've had brakes hooked up to this truck before. So let's see what the brakes are doing now. Are they working? Okay, so we have no brakes. Any brakes? No, this one feels like it's dragging a little bit. Okay, so the brakes are definitely not working. We're good with that. There's another way to check them. I'll show you that when I rip one of these apart. Other thing, look how loose that is, okay? Now, if I just keep using this like this, this is gonna break. What about this side? This one has no end play. This is one of the ones that got hot. It's, it's too tight. What about the other side? This one's got a little bit of end play. What about this one? Okay, so little end play, little end play, lots of slop on the other side on the front one. Okay, I'm gonna rip these apart. This is the one that got really hot, which concerns me. That one was cold, but it had no, it was wobbly too, which is the opposite of the problem, but. If you don't have an impact gun, you should get one. <laughs> these are the best things to keep in your truck. And again, I bought this trailer at a price I can live with and whatever I find, I find, and we'll just repair it. Okay, let's pull this off. Okay, so already I feel some rust in there. So I have a feeling that possibly the reason why this got so hot is this brake was dragging. Okay, now I'll take the end caps off the dust caps and pull the bearing big pair of channel locks i may need a hammer and a screwdriver but there you go take these off of there now this is where a fella wants to wear gloves because more often than not this is a dirty dirty job this grease that's in here looks pretty burnt and uh pretty dirty so I'm gonna pull this all apart and we'll clean it all up. Okay, now this has a spring clip that holds the nut in place. You just pry it off. Okay, no cotter pins in this setup. Now, this nut should be tight, but not like finger tight. Let's see how tight it actually is. I have a feeling this one's too tight. And yes, it is, okay? Way too tight. So we're, we're, we're lucky we made it home because that's, that's how you overheat a bearing right there. Take this nut off. See, and you guys can see this looks like this got hot. Now, if these bearings have any signs of heat on them, I'm just gonna replace them. Uh, I don't have time to mess around. And uh, I want this trailer to be stone dead reliable. So if I need to go across, across my municipality or across the country, I wanna be able to just hook up and go, you know, if somebody needs it or whatever. Okay, there's our bearing. Again, I've just thrown everything on a piece of paper towel. And our drum. So these drums are really full of rust. But the shoes still look good. They're not cracked. Again, it's all full of oil in here, so we're gonna have to clean this all up. And actually, We'll see. I might end up putting shoes on this thing. And it looks like the wires are hooked up. Now the way these work, if you've never seen this before, is this magnet here. This magnet grabs, when it's energized, this becomes a magnet and it grabs the brake drum. And if you're going backwards, it goes this way. And if you're going forwards, it goes this way, okay? 
Okay, so nothing seized in here. There is oil all over this magnet. The other thing you check is if there's still holes in the magnet. These are a wear item. I still see holes in here, but it's so full that I'm gonna have a hard time. Let's pull off this axle in front and compare the two. But uh, well, the wires aren't broken. Everything appears to still be there. So if I just gotta tear these down and clean them up, that's what I'm gonna do. Let's move to this axle. I already took the nuts off. Again, I just wanna see what I got. And that way moving forward, like I'm probably gonna put four brand new tires on this thing. Just so I know what I got. Uh, it's a good trailer. Uh, yeah, these brakes look like they're hooked up. As you can see, there's pigtails here and they are attached. Interesting. So they may not be attached on the other side. The wiring for these brakes goes through the axles. These are 5,200 pound Dexters. I don't know if you guys noticed, but this grease is a little redder than the other stuff. And again, this nut's loose, so that other bearing got hot because it was over torqued, which is something you definitely don't want to do with trailer brakes. Okay, let's see what we got here. Now, I may not even have this fixed today, but at least I can pull it apart. And if I need bearings or anything, I can go to a local auto parts store or wherever and grab parts for this thing. Okay, and I'm just laying it out per axle on a piece of paper towel. See, and this one is way too loose. Way too loose. So, again, this is regular trailer maintenance. If you don't do this, you're going to end up blowing a bearing. That sucks. You can destroy your axle too. So, my other trailer, the axles are kind of scored up. The bearings don't fit, fit snugly anymore. Okay, let's pull this out. Your other bearing. There we go. So, kind of same idea here. Just a lot of grease and debris. There's, uh, there's rear seals here. But again, these axle stubs don't look bad. I'm just showing you guys how to how to examine these. Okay, look at this axle stub. Make sure it's not scored or galled up. This one looks okay. Kind of like a crankshaft on a chainsaw. Same kind of idea. It looks exactly the same. It's just way bigger. A little bit of little bit of discoloration there but this may be just a wiring issue again i'll show you guys what we're dealing with behind here i'll bring your camera in and just look at the wiring okay so you have two wires coming in here this is what energizes this magnet okay it's not a magnet all the time it's only a magnet when it's energized okay these wires go through the axle and these are the stubs where they've been soldered together um I'm going to do some poking around here and see what I can figure out. Um, looks like we may need some brake shoes on this thing. But uh, all in all, I'm not seeing anything that scares me. I knew they were going to be rusty. This thing's been sitting. And let's face it, it's an old trailer. Okay, I'm going to putter around here and see what I can figure out power-wise why we don't have brakes. Okay, it's a little while later. It's starting to get dark out. And... Uh, I got the other side apart. You guys notice anything here? No lining on the shoes. Um, it is what it is, right? Okay. Again, make sure, make sure that everything moves free. This one is seized. See that? So this arm is seized. No big deal though. Backing plates are rock solid. Like he said, he didn't think the brakes ever worked. He told me straight up that there was something going on with the brakes on this trailer. So, um, 
I bought this trailer at a price I could live with. And what I mean by that is I expected this thing to have brake issues. The fella told me so. And uh, he seemed like an honest fella. And we made a deal based on that. So, again, axles are in decent shape. There's a little bit of discoloration on this axle, but I can't feel none of that. It, it looks worse than it is. And uh, it is what it is. Okay, let's talk about trailer brake wiring and how to test it without going too far into it. Now, me being me, uh, I ripped all the tape off of this plug. There was hockey tape, A. Eh? Holding all this together, I'm going to clean all this up. I, I don't, I don't like how the wiring was on this typical trailer. Uh, this is your brain box. I like this system. Now I believe this is supposed to be outboard, but for whatever reason, it got mounted inboard. Um, I might outboard this again, but perhaps uh, make some kind of a metal cover for it, even a, a tin cover. Bet you the tin man could whip that up. Okay, now, if you're talking trailer wiring, your brakes, okay, this is a seven pin, seven pin connector. Okay, in here, there's seven pins, bottom right, okay, across from the tab that holds it in, bottom right is brakes, typically your blue wire, okay. Now, quick and easy way to test brakes is to dynamite your brakes. It's better if you have two people, if you don't just tape it in place. Take a test light, hook it up to a ground source, touch the pin. Now this one, I'm just closing the door on it. Uh, I have I have the brake switch all the way closed with a piece of tape. Now I'm gonna set you guys up, turn it on and off, and you guys can watch. I'll yell on, off. That way we know there's actually power at the truck. Okay, you can see it's still on, so quick and easy way. Now, if you don't have a test light and you're horsing around with this, take your trailer plug. I'll show you guys, this is super easy. Anybody can do this, you don't need any tools. Well, you need some tools, but the only tools you need, you already have, because you already took the wheels off. Okay, plug your trailer plug in. Now, if I got power, if I got power at my magnets, Okay, remember these magnets energize, become magnets. They grab the inside of the brake drum. Okay, and they end up grabbing the brake drum and it moves the brakes out. Okay, it's just a cam. Now this one is seized, so I can't show you exactly how it works, but look. Okay, it's a magnet. Okay, let's try this one. Okay, so those work. Let's check out the other side. Okay, and just to finish this off, this is all trailers. Doesn't matter how big the axles are. This is how they work. They have an inner bearing, an outer bearing, and a seal. Now, these seals all appear to be leaking. Uh, the magnet was covered in oil. But when you're replacing bearings, which I'm going to, um, you got to replace the seal, so whether it's good or not, um, this is very similar to a crank seal. And uh, you guys can see the, uh, the spring was actually prolapsed. This spring, this seal is getting hard. Um, it's not cracking yet, but it's not pliable either. So, and again, this is a job that you want to wear, typically want to wear uh, gloves for because it is... Dirty. Okay, let's pull this inner bearing out. This is the big bearing. Uh, the inner bearing is always larger than the outer bearing, at least all the trailers I've dealt with. Uh, Etc. You want to wipe all the grease off. And again, just have a look at what you're dealing with. And again, I, I mean, I bought this trailer knowing it's been sitting. It was in a snowbank. And... Uh, that's why I keep saying I paid a price for it that I could live with because I knew, I knew that I was probably going to have to do bearing and brake work to this thing. I'll probably put four brand new tires on it because that's just the kind of guy I am. Now remember, I tow all the time. Um, a couple times a week, I got a trailer behind my truck. And I don't go super far, but 
Um, over a year, if you rack up the miles, you know, my, my trailers probably go, I don't know. My trailers probably are only towed, you know, a couple thousand miles a year, but still, you know, they're always moving and I just, I don't have time for failures. Okay. So first things first, get the grease off. Have a look at the bearings. Are they discolored? Now that is all grease you guys are seeing. So this one looks great. Uh, no issues there. If you were going to replace the bearing, which I am going to in this one, there's an inner race in here. And again, this is just packed full of grease. This is old burnt grease, uh, not what you want. Amazing this axle made it home. I pulled over twice to let the axles cool because in 30 miles I could already see, I pulled over because this isn't my first rodeo with a trailer. I pulled over and checked the axle temp. This one was getting hot. Um, no, I wasn't going far and whatever. If something happened, it happened. There's an inner race in here. And the way you get that out, there's an inner race and an outer race. You want to replace those with your bearings. They're a match set. Um, but you can hammer those out. Now what I'm going to do, because I'm going to go to a parts store and uh, match these up with the right bearings. And I don't want to do it twice. I'm just going to hammer these out. Okay, this is just a soft piece of pipe. I can see the outer brace. I'm just going to top it out. There it is. Race number one. Okay, and then I'm going to flip this around. And again, I am doing this on the fender just because, like I said, can't bring this thing inside. And yeah, I could set back up and do this in the shop, but I'll just do this one for you guys so you can see. Almost. You could use a press to do this, whatever you want. Once you know it, I gave her one more good smack and she fell out of there. Okay, there you go. There's your inner race. I want to clean all this stuff up and uh, call her a day. Okay, I'm going to really clean this stuff and show you guys the inner and outer bearings and just what to look for. Okay, so here's your outer bearing. See how those bearings are gold? The rollers there, they've gotten too hot. Okay. So, and I knew that coming home, I knew that I smoked this bearing, but it is what it is, right? You go and pick up a trailer, you're not going to, I'm not ripping the wheels and tires off and all that. Uh, this is a maintenance item. So again, this one is completely kaput. Look at the race. See how it's gold? So this got smoking hot. And again, this is the outer bearing. There's a lot of load on this one and it was just too tight. Um, also the, the grease in here was old. If you grease your bearings once a year, repack them. Uh, that's what I generally do. Um, if your trailer moves all the time, no, no problems. Like I've never had a problem with a wheel bearing, but I maintain them, right? This one here, I'll just spray it off. This one looks fine. Okay. But I'm replacing it. If the inside's gone or if the outside's bound, I'm doing them in a pair. Again, you don't want these to spin because if they spin, you'll take out the, the axle, okay? If they break, you'll take out the axle. And you can feel this, it's crunchy, okay? How about this one? This one's got really rough spots in it, okay? So now all I'm gonna do is put all this in a bag. I'm going to go down to my parts store whenever I get a chance this week and I'll buy four sets of bearings because honestly, um, I guess as many as I think are bad, but realistically at this point, um, two or three of them are no good. So, uh, we'll just replace all of them. These are cheap. 
you're not you're not spending you're not spending a bunch of money per axle on this stuff and i'll put new seals in you can buy this in a kit with new seals and bearings and then the other thing i got to do is make sure that those magnets have enough wear left on them and then i can order brake shoes and uh brake shoes and bearings and we can throw this thing back together and this thing will be good to go for years and years and years okay well we're gonna leave the trailer up in the air and uh We'll grab some parts this week. I'm going to throw all the parts in my ultrasonic cleaner with some Dawn dish soap and some hot water. Get her nice and cleaned up. And uh, I'll look into brake parts and bearings maybe a week or two before we get this thing back together. But uh, there you guys go. That's how you inspect uh, trailer brakes and wheel bearings. The bearings are the most important part. I mean, you do want brakes, but if... Uh, if you have a brake shoe fail or something like that, you'll still have three other brakes that work. But if you have a bearing fail, you're done. You're stuck on the side of the road. So grease those bearings, adjust them. And uh, when I get my new bearings, I'll show you guys how to install new bearings, races and seals and all that kind of stuff. Anyhow, thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later.